Hello and welcome, my name is Parky and today I'm playing some Rurs. I hope that's the correct way of saying it. It is a Dutch name and it means giant, or I think titan or something like that. I've had a few lessons from my Dutch friend how to say it, but I've probably just insulted like so many Dutch people. Anyway, this is a smallish indie game, um, which is pretty hard to explain. It's sort of a simulation sort of strategy type thing, but to be honest, probably the best way of describing how it works and what it's all about is to actually just play it. Now, I do apologise to people who have played this before, um, but I am going to play this from the very beginning. I played this a little bit yesterday just to get to grips with it and know how it works for you guys, um, but I'm going to go through it all again with you because I think it will give everyone a good understanding of what it's all about and probably mean that there will be a few more people like raging at me. Uh, but yeah, we're going to do the beginning of the first era and there might be a little cutscene or something, so I'll just shut up if there is. Okay, so here we go. Introduction. You have awakened from your slumber. You find your surface dry and barren. It is lifeless. Zoom in and out. So this is just obviously the uh, tutorial of zooming in and out and all that rubbish. So you use the left mouse button to drag the planet around. This is our planet. Um, as you can see, it's, it's an a slightly unusual game at the moment. It gets very interesting, I think, anyway. Because we can use the arrow keys to move left and right. Uh, this is, again, just rotating, but I prefer using the mouse. Now, create the giants. Using what little strength you have, you create the ocean giant and rock giant, the instruments of your will. So you may be wondering what the heck is going on right now. Basically, it will be explained. Um, you'll get the idea pretty quickly, but these are the giants. Um, the goal is to have life roam your surface eternally, and to start you'll turn this dry wasteland into paradise. Select a giant. You can either do this by... I might as well explain this myself. You can either just click on them like this, or click on these to select whichever one. Right, and they've got ability bars, each of these things doing different things, but we'll see as these are unlocked what they do. Okay, so we'll just rotate around to this guy. Use the right mouse button to click on a patch of land. Yes, yeah, so basically once you've selected one of these giants, you just right click wherever you want and they will move there. Uh, but it actually wants us to move these together at this point, so we'll do this. There we go. Pause the game, spacebar, this is kind of useful later on. And inquire about land, so you click on a bit of land and it tells you about it. I'll just skip quickly through this bit because it's fairly boring and you'll sort of get the idea. Uh, so basically we're going to use the Create Ocean ability that this giant has. So basically this game is all about creating a planet in order to provide good enough um, surrounding environments for humans to settle and um, live in whilst you sleep. That was really badly explained. Hello. Select the forest giant. Okay, you can also double click on the giant's portrait in the lower left corner to zoom into their location. So you do this. Yeah, get the idea. Select the forest giant. He flows with life. Create lush forests. Wonderful. So basically, where you've put the ocean down, you'll see along here there's a slightly darker patch of earth. Um, this is the area in which you can actually place down plant life or any other sort of gubbins that you will see fairly shortly. I don't plan on spending the whole time doing this tutorial and we will get stuck in, but it's just so that you'll understand what the hell I'm doing later on. Okay, so there we go. Rock Giant has gained the ability to create a mountain. So we'll just bung this here. It doesn't really matter where you do it. Uh, wait, no, that's a lie. It does matter where you do this, um, but at this point in time it won't because we're not actually really, we don't care about this this world. But you'll see that later on. I'm going to keep using that phrase. <laughs> but I think this is a really interesting game, mostly for the fact that I've never seen anything like it before. All of its ideas are very unique. And I like unique, especially with indie games. So there we go, we've created a desert. Wonderful. Okay, so basically now it wants us to cover the, um, the earth in shit. Well, not shit. Uh, habitable plains, let's just say. Okay, so we'll send the uh, forest guy over here, we'll create another forest over on this side of the lake, and that should give us enough, and hopefully we'll move on to the next little bit of the tutorial. 
I just wanted to say thank you to um, everyone who gave me ideas as to which games I should play on my channel at the moment. Uh, this was actually one of them. It wasn't suggested by many people, but I looked into it. And funnily enough, I'd actually... I meant to buy this just for myself anyway. So, yes, it's going to be good. I'm enjoying it so far. Right, and there we go. Half the world is surrounded, or covered, in life now. Well done, you've accomplished your goal. You've learned to create oceans and forests, mountains and deserts. You hope the life blooming from your lands will remain while you slumber. Click to continue and view all your achieved developments during this game. So there we go. So we finished the first era. Let's play the next tutorial. I'm hoping we'll probably get through all of the tutorials this episode. At least that's what I'm going to go for. Um, so it might be a slightly longer episode. But if you're not interested in this and you know how it works, uh, the second episode will be the one that you want to look out for. Okay, second era, you've woken again from your slumber. You find the service dry and barren. You recall a time when you use your giants to create oceans and forests. You gather all your strength again so the ocean giant and forest giant can reawaken. So I think... I'm just guessing, because I'm not sure about all the lore in this game or anything, but I'm having a guess in that when it says you gather your strength, that we're actually the planet itself. It would make sense, wouldn't it? Okay, so we'll create an ocean, and obviously we want to create um, a forest. Actually, that was pretty badly put. That was poorly placed, uh, but it doesn't matter. I should probably should have waited a little bit longer. Uh, in fact, you know what, we'll just do it again here, just to cover this little bit of extra gubbins, because otherwise we're not going to get this. There we go. Cool. Right. Well done, you sense a change. Somewhere in a cave, something small has awakened. You sense a new spark of life throwing you th flowing through your core. <laughs> Jesus. And it seems your forest giant has gained a new ability, which is fruit plants. So what we're going to do is plant these down over here by the ocean. Now what this do what what this does what this does is it will it will just create a little patch of plants down here, as you can see. And there's like a little food icon here, and you can see there is a little nomad walking the surface, and he has settled. Use the forest. Ah, oh, right, I've done that. Banisher settled. As soon as humans settle, all their thoughts and feelings flow back into you. It would be wise to learn as much from these humans as you can. Click on the village to see the village borders light up. Which I think is this here and here. Okay, each end of the village border is marked by a bunker of boy. Actually, no, obviously this is the village border. Uh, placing plants, animals or minerals within the village borders will generate resources. This is where I got, like, very, uh, scared <laughs> when I played this yesterday. It's starting to get complicated, but I've got the hang of it now. Uh, villagers want to grow by using food, which is generated by plants, obviously. Wealth and technology, which we haven't come to yet. You can tap control to cycle, th cycle through additional info about what the patches are currently producing. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, blueberry is producing five food, as you can see here. So the maximum food the village can use is five. No shit. Okay, the resources are shown up here. So the, this number here is how many res resources are available and the number here is how many resources they're actually using. Eventually they will... It's going to tell us all this. Eventually they will use the full uh, resources available to them, um, but you can increase the amount... Um, we'll just bung this here. We'll, we can increase the amount of... Um, or the speed at which they use the food, which is this number here, by increasing the max number of food that there is available to them, if that makes sense. God, this is really bad. I should probably just let the game... Yeah, there we go. Yeah. You can always speed things up by adding... Yeah. So this is what I was saying. The bigger the difference between the food in use and the food in borders, the faster the food in use will grow. Fairly complicated, but it's, it's not really. Okay, so what we want to do is... We'll probably, to be honest, once we've got this cooldown down, we'll just plant a load of these just to speed up this bit of the tutorial. Boom. There we go. Actually, that was outside of the borders. What a silly move by me. It doesn't matter. We'll get there eventually. So we're using 5 out of 15. Actually, no, it is in use. Why did it... Oh, okay, now I'm just derping. Ignore me. Ignore me. Oh, poor guy just sneezed. <laughs> right, okay, so we'll get through this pretty quick. I'm just going to bring this guy up here, because I have a feeling that he's going to um, want to add something to this fairly soon. 
And we'll put some more plants over here. This is generally a very bad tactic, just to put all of one sort of thing by a village, but for the sake of the tutorial, it's fine. Just want one more. There we go. Well done, the village is growing and the people are gaining knowledge. Once they've started building something of their own, or they have even started building something of their own, derp. Okay, uh, started building a granary, granary, they need your help. Building the granary product project has allowed villagers to gain a specialization. I ca I'm doing really poorly at speaking today. Click on the project patch to see its specialization in the upper right hand corner. Which is here, mushroom eaters, plus 15 food for each mineral within the borders. Okay. This, speciali this specialization requires minerals to provide its boost. The giants lack the skill to create these minerals. Completing the project could help remedy this. Okay. Yeah. So basically, this is our objectives. We need 20. Uh, we've currently got 12. So what I can do is probably uh, just bum down a load of... Nope. Oh, no, I can't. Oh, sorry. I'm not... What a derp. Sorry, this is me derping. Uh, so we want to put down some of these animals. Now, domestic animals, which is unlocked by the ocean giant. There we go. Click on the animals to view their range. Light up. Click the patch of chickens to view their statistics. Again, it just works in the same way. Um, so yeah, placing uh, chickens and blueberries next to each other gives them this boost. Uh, where is it? Yes, plus three food for blueberries within the animal range. So there we go. So replace a few of the blueberries with chickens. Which I think is a very, very good idea. So if we replace this one in the middle over here, we'll get the effect of both of these blueberries either side. Hence boosting our overall food. Don't worry, this does this does get more exciting. <laughs> I'm hoping people haven't just tuned out now because they're bored. That would make me upset. It's definitely worth sticking with. So there we go, the granary's complete. And let's carry on. Well, so please excuse me, because at the moment I'm feeling a bit blocked. I feel as though I've got some sort of cold coming on. Uh, because of your positive, positive influence, the villagers have decreed their ambassador to join you. The ambassador wishes to climb upon the shoulders of your giants and increase their strength. Okay, now what this does, it'll probably explain, is basically when you choose a giant to pick up the ambassador, it unlocks one of the skills next in its um, skill branching tree type thing. Select the rock giant use the right mouse button to pick up the ambassador and this will unlock this raised mountain or probably this precious metal one yeah there we go okay well done the ambassador's spirit has unlocked new abilities within the rock giants blah 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 okay place some minerals within the borders of the city now we might as well we could just bung them here and replace one of the berry bushes So again, this will increase the amount of food that we have because we've placed minerals within our borders because that's the symbi symbiosis, or, or the specialization actually, of this granary. Okay, there we go. Raise a desert. Of at least 10 patches. Yes, this is what I was talking about before. It's best to actually raise a desert um, as far away as possible from these other guys. So whilst this guy slowly makes his way around, I'll probably cut it because it takes a while. Right, okay, so the guy's actually made it all the way around now. So as you can see, he's raising a mountain. He's still got the little guy on his head. I think that's a really cute touch as well. Cute. Oh, God, I just used the word cute. How disgusting. Okay, place some animals in the desert. Oh, bloody hell. I've got to get the bloody ocean guy around here. I might as well bring them all around. So again, this is going to take a while, watching these two people walking around very slowly. I think that's one thing I wish they'd added to this game, is perhaps a slightly quicker um, movement speed on some of these guys. Well, I suppose it does add its sort of um, tactical touch, I suppose, in the later game. The, the uh, fact that you have to sort of wait for the guys to get there. In fact, it's probably a good thing that they're slow. Maybe not in the tutorial, though. Okay, so there we go, We've rambled enough for them to actually get around here in time. So we're going to raise some domestic animals in the borders here, of the desert. So there we go. Right. 
So here we go, we've got some nice little kangaroo rats. Very cute. And we see we've got a nomad here. He's probably going to settle on this square. Or maybe this one. Oh, there we go. Right, lame peak. It certainly is lame. <laughs> okay, excellent. A new village has settled in this desert. You sense it will start a new project soon. There we go. Click on the project patch to view its specialization in the upper right hand corner. So, uh, let's have a look. There we go. Specializations activate when a project starts being built. Be sure to always check the specialization when the project starts. Project specialization generates food for each animal within the village borders. The kangaroo rats generate one food for each patch in their range. The specialization specialization is providing an extra five food for each animal. God. I think it's the word specialization that's getting me. Okay, place a mineral. Okay, so minerals of this kind increase the wealth in the region. Actually, we probably don't want to place that there. We'll put it right next to the granary. So yeah, if we have a look at this, we need some wealth and some more food. So what I might even do is put down another animal here, and then I'm going to put some more minerals right here. Okay. Okay, so we need to activate these ah, with five wealth. Okay, so we need to get more wealth, <laughs> which I would say probably the best way of doing. Just have a look. What is this? Plus food. Yeah. Okay, so that increases food. Obviously, we don't want any of that. This is about to cool down, so I'll put this in the middle here to benefit from both of these. I think these benefit anyway. Ah, plus eight wealth if they're next to another quartz. So even perhaps it might be worth replacing this guy here. Actually, no, these aren't within the borders, are they? What am I doing? I'm such an idiot. Okay, so what we want to do is put down some animals there. And we'll actually put these within the borders of the city. That would be quite nice and useful. I suppose this one is, so that's fine. Uh, we'll put... Oh, God, we don't want to raise another mountain. I don't think they'd appreciate that very much. Okay, so we'll put some more precious metals here. There you go. Well done, your quartzes are now activated. There we go, complete the project. So now we just have to wait. Now I could even put down some more food, so I might just do that, because why not? Uh, we can even put that in this patch here. I'm just trying to speed this up by putting things in random places. Obviously this is not the best way of doing things. This is slightly strategized in like the main game. But for now, it doesn't matter. So we'll put this down here. And I'm back. Welcome. Sorry about that. Uh, my computer actually just had a massive spaz. That's one of the problems with having two screens. I accidentally clicked on my second one and it crashed the game, which meant that I actually had to play right up until this point again, which was really fun. But I'm going to carry on and finish just this stage of the tutorial. We're two thirds of the way through, so don't worry, there's not much more. Uh, right, okay. So I, I think we've done a little bit of this before, uh, but it doesn't matter. We'll just do it quickly. And I think we're going to need some more of this, so we'll just do this really quick. And we'll be right back to where we were, which I think is probably actually at the very end, which I hope is not going to be too bad timing for the amount of time I've had to spend redoing it. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay, so we need some more food, so we're going to get on that pretty quickly. I've just activated the quartz. Let's continue improving the village until it can finish its project. And I think that's pretty much where I was. So let's see what goes on from here. Okay, so we currently it looks as if we're going to have enough wealth. And we've got this the time limit here. We've got, well, okay, almost a thousand hours to do this. So you basically can't lose this, but, but we're going to continue, because why not? Actually, I think I just plopped that on the same bit, which is a bit pointless. However, what we're probably going to do, do we need more wealth? Now that wealth's going to get there anyway, so I might as well just wait for the domestic animals. I'm actually wondering, can we put down fruit plants here? I wonder what they'd look like in the desert. I don't think I've done this before. Oh wow, a bit of in-game lag there. Ah, blooming ground. Okay, okay. So that didn't actually give any food. Not a problem, I was just interested in seeing what that would do, actually. Okay, so we'll put some more of these animals over here, and this should fulfill what we need. 
In fact, to be honest, we only need one more food, so this is definitely going to do it. There we go. Everyone's happy. Excellent work. You have performed admirably. The humans have strengthened your core. You have learnt about villages, resources, specialisations and symbioses. Ez. <laughs> Symbiosis, says. The time for slumber has once again come upon you. And hope the humans will survive until the next era dawns. You can now go try to lead humans in different developments in the era game. Developments can unlock new plants, animals or minerals and progress you through the game. There is also a third beginning to learn about greed, transmutations and danger. That's where the game gets interesting. Uh, if you ha have any difficulties, you can always select the third beginning from the game select menu. Click to continue, blah blah blah. Right, so we go. So we've finished the second era. And I think that's probably where we're going to leave it today. Sorry it's been a bit all over the place, and please apolo I, I have to apologise again. Um, I'm still getting back into this after a month off, so please forgive me if I'm a bit rambly and rubbish. But if you've enjoyed the episode, then please feel free to leave your support in the comments below. Leave a like, favourite, comment, or even subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. Awkward. Awkward goodbye. Awkward.